Hello and welcome to Murder Dictionary Podcast. My name is Brianna and that is Kelly. Hey. So before we get started, we wanted to remind you of a few things you'll always find in our description and show notes every week. First of all, you can find links to our social media, our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you want to follow us over there, we've got memes and information about killers, information about episodes. So follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You will also find links to our Patreon and our Threadless. So if you want to join our Patreon, you can find bonus episodes and we get little merch items that we'll send out to you like stickers, magnets, etc. If you want bigger merch items like t-shirts, phone cases, notepads, bunch of housewares, you can go to our Threadless, which will also be linked in the show notes. You will also find links to some resources like self-help stuff, like 12-step programs, some domestic violence resources, anti-bullying, a bunch of stuff like that if you want to visit. Yeah, CPS. So whatever you need, we've tried to include a variety of links so you can get to those resources easily. I am going to take a look at those soon because I think I need some self-help. You need a lot of stuff. (laughs) (laughs) You need a lot. Yeah. I don't even know if we have the resources for you. <laughs> well, that's promising. Thank you. <laughs> so, what else do we have? Um, I'm forgetting something. And show I notes? I am. Do we have show notes? <laughs> that's what I've been <laughs> talking about the whole time. <laughs> oh. The last thing that we have, oh, links to our resource materials. Yes. So, if you want to do some more reading on what we discussed tonight, we always have the links to what articles we use, some different things that we read, whatever documentaries, so you can follow up if you want to. And I think that's that's pretty much it for what's in the show notes, but we do want to say thank you to our new Patreon supporters. So it's been a few weeks, so we've got a list. I cut it in half, though. Okay. So we wanted to say thank you for new Patreon support from Nikki, Marlene, Steven, Molly, Laura, Kaylee, another Leah. Oh, man. Jamie, Jen, Jess. What? Okay, Nikki, Mylene. Steven. Vader. uh, Steven, Leah. Polly? (laughs) (laughs) Nikki, Marlene, Steven, Molly, Laura, Kaylee, Leah, Jamie, Jen, and Jess. Jamie, Jen, Jess. I'll get that at the end. Thank you, guys. We really appreciate your support. Thank you so much for your support on Patreon. Yeah, thank you so much. So I have we've got another Patreon episode to release. I'm probably going to release that about probably the same day that I release this one. So check that out. There's going to be a new one. And that's that necrophiliac murder that we talked about a little while ago. Yes. Yes. So definitely check that out if you're on our Patreon. And I think. That's a pretty much it. Apology? Oh, me? yeah. yeah. <laughs> you Not you. I should apologize. Because <laughs> um, life's been hard. Dude. And I just want to apologize. And I feel like, uh, should I play the lottery? Because I've had the worst luck. And It's got to turn around at some point. So maybe today is the best time to put some numbers in. You yeah. know? Because life's been hard. And we've had to take, well, I've had to take a little hiatus. So I'm sorry. And now you're about to go through stuff. So hopefully. Yeah, my surgery is going to be this week. I appreciate everyone. People have been messaging and asking. And I really appreciate people working or like reaching out and trying to figure out what's going on with us. And yeah. It's been really sweet. Yeah, people are nice. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. So I'm going to have surgery on Thursday. My my, I've been having a lot of complications, and they had to postpone my surgery. But since we're recording today, I should be able to get the new episode out. Actually, probably the same day that I'm going in for surgery. <laughs> so I'll probably like put it out on on Wednesday night. That'll probably be me packing my bags with yeah. my hospital stuff and it's like we'll posting be there a with new you. episode. Exactly. Yeah. You're there in spirit, and you have been going through it. Like, I feel like my surgery is easy compared no, to what's going no, on it's in your not. life. No. We don't normally talk about, like, ourselves because we want to keep yeah. it focused on the story and not really be disrespectful to the victims. Exactly. But this is a rare case where we're going to maybe talk about ourselves for a couple minutes and yeah. then we'll be done. 
So. Uh, just I just need links to the self help <laughs> and more Man, but you you know and I've been sick and when you get dude, a you had family, pneumonia Kelly got pneumonia you guys yeah you know what that's like when it you're breathing? shit got real and I smoke weed and it feels like wait well, I what been, no 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 when no, did that start <laughs> <laughs> I was like I didn't start I didn't smoke weed during which was really hard because I, I figured that you were weed. still smoking no no once the second wave of it hit uh I just wasn't. It's just the breathing part The hospital part wasn't scare good. the weed out of you. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Which even though now it's legal, but I guess it doesn't help to smoke weed and smoking in general, probably. Yeah. yeah. And then all that led up to just being, you know, depressed from all that happening, and then dude, it was awful. Yeah, it's just a whole wave of uh, I know. What's that called? Uh, disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that. Oh, okay. But we're here, and I'm glad, and I'm I know. happy that we're so we're alive. kind of falling apart. Yes. We're a little bit fucked up. You can hear that I'm still – I'm not going to sound any better till after I have surgery. <laughs> it's going to be pretty bad. But the good news is we're on the bend. So uh, we should hopefully not be missing episodes going forward. Imagine after your surgery, you just come back with, like, a, just a completely different voice. <laughs> <laughs> imagine I just turn into Barry White. <laughs> that would be amazing. Uh, you can only hope. <laughs> So we really we just apologize for yeah, the delays sorry. and hopefully going forward everything will be fine and we've got a Patreon episode I've got a couple others written so we're gonna try and really make it up to you because we feel bad I just I hate not keeping a schedule but we're doing our best and life happens and it is what it is so sorry but thank you for being patient like really appreciate yeah. the patience thanks for sticking with us yeah yeah and with all that said. Let's let's get to a story. What letter we are we need on? this. Yeah. We're on X now, and we are we're X part one, doing it big with triple X uh, porn murders. I did the murder of Charles Xavier. So. <laughs> no, <laughs> please tell me that's not true. <laughs> we haven't even been talking about murders, so you could be on a completely <laughs> different subject. Like, like you just decided X was something different. I wouldn't even know how the man got in a wheelchair. <laughs> No, so we're on X for triple X murders, which is kind of up our alley, right? Dude, this is so up our alley. This is like, I even I'm put stoked. in cross streets because I was like, I know exactly where that is. And, <laughs> yes, um, you so did? For links in the, uh, you know what, not even, um, there's going to be a really cool video. It's almost. Oh, shit. I mean, if you don't like videos where people die at the end, you probably shouldn't watch it. But. <gasps> is it a porn where someone dies? No. Oh, no. Okay. No. Although when you type in triple X and murder into your Google search. You get up a lot of watch lists. <laughs> Did you learn a lesson? It was bad. It went straight to like hardcore snuff. Like, uh, oh, dude. I mean, it didn't use the word snuff, but but, but we all know what snuff is. Yeah. yeah. So we are talking about a uh, porn actor Stephen Clancy Hill. So his uh, never heard never of him. heard of him. Nope. Uh, his well, we don't really like guy performers that much anyway. How many inches? No, <laughs> Not enough. <laughs> <laughs> So his name's uh his porn name is Steve Driver, right? That sounds familiar. Okay, so you would know him not from Nail and Palin, but from the second version, two thousand eight, uh, like Erection Day or Election Day or something. Yeah, they had like a part two to that that had Palin in it, right? Yes. Yeah, so he played Barack Obama. Oh, he's the Obama man, and we should. I totally have pictures to go along with this, where he's like standing back to back with the porn Sarah Palin. Nice. So, so that's where you <laughs> might know him. Okay, from. that's. Probably it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not all the other crazy porn that I watched. <laughs> Definitely not that. Definitely not. So he was born May 8th, 1976 in Riverdale, Maryland. So he was the youngest of four um, four sons. Uh, he had a black mother and a white father. And he, his father was a software developer who worked on a, like the space shuttle launch control system at the Kennedy Center in Damn. Florida. Right. Super cool, smart, smart family, and he had lived with his um, he had lived with his family until his parents split up. He moved to Washington D.C. with his mom, and, and then Maryland with his mom, but spent kind of going back and forth uh, to Florida every every summer. Florida, Florida. <laughs> <laughs> so the space shuttle. You know, space now center. we know this story is going downhill. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess the the move to D.C. was kind of hard for Hill. Yeah, he really. He wanted to live with his dad, too, but I guess because he was half black and half white, he lived, um, he was kind of picked on, you know, bullied for not being too white or too black. You know what I mean? Like, you don't really fit in with both 
That sucks. Yeah. So it's fucked up. And he lived in kind of a like a lower income all black neighborhood too. Mm-hmm. And um he was kind of thinner too. So he was just mocked for just being, you know, just kind of a nerdy for looking like Barack Obama before Barack Obama was cool. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Got it. I like that one of the articles that I was looking at, it was like, you know, he was made fun of because he spoke standard English. Standard? Swear to God. (laughs) As opposed to Ebonics? Like, what are they trying to say? Dude, there was a couple of these in these articles where I'm like, hmm. That's fucked up. Yeah, so. Damn. To counter, or just basically to uh, gain some confidence and to counter the bullying, he joined martial arts. Because we that know. Helps. Yeah, it does. It helps you develop. Makes um, you a champion. It does. Because what do you Puffy just... pants. <laughs> cut off sleeves. You know what I mean? Six just belts. ruling your life. Yeah. <laughs> so you could just beat up any person that, you know, kind of bullied you. And it gives right. you self-confidence, you know, sense of accomplishment. I honestly was reading the benefits of martial arts. And I was like, I got to do something. You and I are going to take karate. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Rex Kwando. <laughs> But this kind of gave him, like, a a love for Japanese culture. Okay. So he was really into any type of martial arts. And it just kind of stuck with him from being a kid. He really loved Japanese culture. During his junior year in high school, he went to stay with his dad in Florida. And he kind of showed an interest in the military, specifically being, like, an Air Force pilot. So he joined the junior ROTC program at his school. Military. Military. Check. Yep. Martial arts. Military. This is not going well. So, because of... Did he also want to be a cop? (laughs) (laughs) Almost. But it said... Okay, here's another quote, too, that... Again, with the whole way of speaking. But he developed an interest in guns and started talking like a young conservative. Oh, jeez. What can you... What's a young conservative talk like? Like Tell me. Ted Nugent? Uh, oh. Just really oh. amped up, but loving guns. Okay. <laughs> thought he was just like, you know, pro-life and <laughs> all these weird. I couldn't get it. So his dad started to notice. So he noticed that um he liked guns. He liked martial arts, which is cool. His dad kind of wanted him to is go it? down that. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, for a man, you know, I guess. I get you want it. your son to be into whatever. guns and crushing Manly poons. stupid stuff. <laughs> you know, or whatever. But... He started to notice that his son was being a little bit of a weirdo. You know what I mean? Uh, and yeah. He liked to call them bizarre personality traits. But one of them, he he said that uh, Stephen refused to wear his glasses. But not just, you know, because he wanted contacts, but because he believed he could use willpower to improve his vision. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost the same as LASIK eye surgery. <laughs> just my power of my brain. <laughs> <laughs> just think real hard. Just keep thinking about it just use the force yeah <laughs> so he's not exactly normal i mean he's, he's yeah. already showing to be a little bit a little bit yeah crazier. like maybe there's some some like mental illness or some mental health challenges that yeah. are going on there and his dad caught it so but did he treat it that's the question good question okay. we'll find out <laughs> stay tuned so i guess he had been in a basketball game and he had um gotten hurt he had broken broken an arm and he needed like metal plates oh that made his karate chopping really strong i guess <laughs> get through those boards really easily <laughs> <laughs> so he had bad vision bad metal plates and um again he was trying to be an air air force pilot so okay. his dad was kind of like hey you're looking kind of fucked up you know you got metal plates in your arm you got a broken wing <laughs> <laughs> exactly how you gonna fly <laughs> <laughs> but you know his dad still supported him, but he thought it was kind of it should be in your in, in your mind that you may not make it. Right. You know? Yeah. You have to have realistic expectations. Yeah, exactly. Which, you know, your parents should be constantly feeding you the information that you should just reach for the stars and mm-hmm. everything's attainable. Yeah. Might be hard for him to hear that from his dad. Yeah. But I mean, still, maybe- you got to you got to set yourself up for like. Having realistic goals. Yeah, you know? I'm not sure if his dad told him, but I know his dad but it, had it he in knew, his mind. Like, he knew. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. He's like, well, we're going to try. But he went, um, Stephen ended up going to the University of Maryland, okay. like specifically to be an Air Force pilot um, in the ROTC program. Okay. Which is cool. I guess if your parents are footing the bill, yeah, you might have to be a little bit more realistic about it. But, right. <laughs> um, so Stephen didn't really do so good at the University of Maryland. He was kind of just uh, overwhelmed with his classes and... Um, but he was still into ROTC again, still wanted to be a pilot. And he even b- 
began to take like flight instruction to kind of get him on that path, uh, but he didn't do well. Mm. He kind of sucked at that too. And he was rejected for officer training with ROTC by his sophomore year. Oh, shit. So it's one thing if your academic career isn't going well, because a lot of times that happens. Yeah, like it's you, a little bit more than, than you think it would be coming out of high school. Absolutely. You're not really prepared for it. That happens to a lot of kids. But if the one thing you thought you could count on falls apart, then you're fucked. Yeah. And most people, if you're if you're a superstar football player and you're good at what you're supposed to do, your classes are somehow going to get passed, right? right. Somehow. Right. People at USC, Magic. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> So you have to be good at one thing. You have to be good for the one thing you go there. It's okay if you're not good in your academics. You can pass with a 2.0, which is all C's. <laughs> not that I know anything about that. <laughs> right, I was going to say. <laughs> but he's not even good at being a pilot. Yeah, so. that sucks. That's got to be a pretty big crush to his fragile masculinity. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but something else happened at University of Maryland when he went there. Bum, bum, bum. Which should be kind of uh, telling to what happens in the future. He was about 22 years old, and he was arrested because he displayed a gun at his campus and threatened to shoot his math teacher. What? For what? So he was taking a math 111 class, right? And he really needed to pass. So he told them, I'm going to need you to pass me. And I guess he had shown him the gun and uh, threatened to dismember him and the teaching assistant if he didn't boost his grade. What? And he told him, that's how mobsters work. He kind of flashed the gun at him, <gasps> kind of like trying to pretend like he's mobbish, but he really wanted to pass this class. Oh, my God. Just like lifted up his shirt, like yeah. guns tucked in his waistband, like, hey, Ex- check this out. Exactly. So he had basically, um, he didn't take a scheduled exam. So that kind of huh. messed him up. Uh, this is an introduction to probability class. And two days later, he had requested a meeting with his teacher, Alvaro Alvarez Perea. So he showed up. He wanted to talk to him or whatever. And he's like, and I quote, I don't want you to be surprised or anything of the sort, but I need an A in the course. <laughs> <laughs> and Oh, my God. I have to try this. <laughs> I have to try this in every area of my life. <laughs> and you're going to give it to me. <laughs> yes. And then he opened his jacket, showed him the gun, and... He told him he was going to kill him. And he said he's going to leave no evidence and basically asked him, what's more important to you? Giving me an A or your life? Oh, my God. <laughs> what do you think the teacher said? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> do you think he gave him an A? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so good. He said it's not within his power to change the grade. Like, if you didn't show up to your fucking test. Yeah, whatever. there's nothing I could do. I don't even have a score for you. Exactly. What yeah. a great teacher, though. Like, he yeah. was not... I ain't scared of shit. No. <laughs> math teachers are the toughest, dude. Yeah. You don't oh, yeah. Math teachers. They're, they're hard asses for sure. So basically, um, so not only would you think it would just be him uh, kind of just making it up, because some people with, like uh, have threats, but they won't. There's no weight behind them. You right. Know? It's just all bark and no bite. Exactly. Basically. But the investigation by police found that he had purchased a nine millimeter uh, semi-automatic handgun. And he had, um, when he was caught, I think they had done like a, basically they'd search all this stuff, but they found like a bunch of bullets too. And he had been <gasps> walking around with it. So he wasn't playing games. He was ready. Like, yeah. Wow. And maybe he wasn't going to do it, but he definitely like. So it's not a situation basically where like he got a bunch of blanks, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like he was really willing to actually go through with it. Basically exactly. all evidence pointed to him being committed to actually doing the it deed? yeah wow. most people don't even have the gun or it'll be a fake gun but this is like a, a legit it wasn't a super soaker or anything <laughs> <laughs> like who's gonna kill someone for a fucking math grade just take the take i the don't know i'm pretty i was pretty bad at math in high school <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. my dad was pretty intense about it me too but i took i really didn't want to get grounded <laughs> <laughs> totally but you know where do i even get a kid like i just wouldn't even know where to go get a gun right at 22 yeah that's true ask me at 29. my dad's house <laughs> that's where <laughs> <laughs> so he ended up getting held on a fifteen thousand dollar bond, and I guess uh, another thing too is that uh, some of his peers that he went to school with saw him carrying around the weapon, which nobody, nobody, I don't know. Yeah, that's a little bit alarming. If I saw a gun, I'd just be like, "Hey, can we talk about that?" And so somebody was like, "Hey, can we talk about that? What's that gun for?" And yeah, he, and I quote, it said, "He said it was for people uh, who get on his bad side." 
Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Just like what? What the fuck? Yeah. Uh, this guy's this guy's pretty silly, dude. Just so, don't make me angry. I'll shoot you because yeah. that's a normal response. So the bad guys. Like, and also whoever's having that conversation with him, shouldn't they say something like, "Oh, really? For when you get mad, let me go talk to a guidance counselor. Yeah, cool. Let so me go report this. I gotta jam out of here real quick. I'm gonna go to the guidance counselor. Not nothing about you. Totally, totally unrelated. unrelated. It's yeah. cool. <laughs> don't be alarmed. Just go about your day as normal. Where are you gonna be in yeah. about an hour? In about an hour, I want you to meet me out front <laughs> of the school. Look for the cops. Right. So, um, before the trial for this case, he went um, underwent a psychological evaluation and was diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder. There we go. Yep. There it is. He said that he did. He admitted to threatening his his teacher, but he said only after the teacher asked him for oral sex. Oh, come on. <laughs> Why would the teacher ask? You should be asking your teacher if you could suck their dick. You know what I mean? For an A in the class, right? Like, why would the, Oh, maybe. Yeah, that makes more sense. Maybe the teacher was like, hey, I saw you missed your exam. You want to suck this dick? Dope it up. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. I guess yeah, that I'm not doesn't the, make sense. Is you only saying that after you got in trouble? Why wouldn't you just be like, hey. Yeah, you could have reported that beforehand. Like, hey, I got this gun because the teacher asked me to, to suck his dick. Like. I wouldn't even have to threaten what was you. That? <laughs> <laughs> Suck his dick. His dick. <laughs> I would just be. You wouldn't even have to threaten him. You'd be like, "Hey, you want to not lose your job? Give me that A." Right. Yeah. Easy. I don't need to threaten you with a gun. It just doesn't make sense. Doesn't. His logic is all fucked up. So he was sentenced uh, or convicted with a far- firearms possession, of course, and was sentenced to house arrest for some reason. Just <laughs> kind of weird. But he's. He ended up serving about eight months house arrest, and in this time, this is where he got into porn. He was stuck at home. And he <gasps> Tell me it's webcam. <laughs> no. Tell me he just jerked off for strangers. That would be that would involve making money. This is him just jerking off and being obsessive about it. Got it. So he developed like a porn addiction, a straight up porn addiction. Which I mean, I guess if you're stressed out or whatever, like it might be something that just makes you not think about it or whatever. Absolutely. Yeah, yoga, like yoga or something, which right. is cool. For your dick. For your dick. But here's the part is that if you're going to be, I guess this is where it becomes an addiction, is that he spent over 20 grand in credit card and <gasps> uh, buying porn on the internet. So that's oh, shit. one, learn how to get shit for free. Everything's free. I've yeah. never spent money on porn on the internet. No. Oh, my God. But like $20,000 in credit cards, like, come on, dude. Damn. There's so much free shit on the internet. So he's also stupid. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, wow. <clears throat> But I guess after he completed his his house arrest, he got a job in the mortgage title industry. Oh, no. But his bad credit and police record kind of fucked up jobs for him. Of you know? course. Yeah. And I'm sure you still have that porn habit. Yeah. Right? You just can't just cut it off when you have an, a nine to five job. Right. You're like, jerking oh, I'm off. I'm okay. And, yeah. He's taking breaks, his 10 minute breaks to go jerk off outside, I'm sure. Yeah. But. Getting yeah. caught in his car, getting caught in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> leaving a trail everywhere (laughs) like steven was here (laughs) but i guess he needed like he just needed to get away and he wanted uh, like anyone you would probably feel overwhelmed and you want to start over again so this is where the move to la happened got it and um i guess he had asked his dad for help and was like hey you know i need i need a fresh start and his parents decided to help him they ended up getting an apartment in the beautiful san fernando valley oh shit and he worked for a mortgage title company. Poor Fernando Valley. Poor Fernando <laughs> Valley. But that job didn't really last long, and he ended up getting laid off. Okay. So now he wanted to try acting. Quote, acting. <laughs> acting with his dick. <laughs> See how those veins pop? Let's, That's acting. That's method right there. <laughs> <laughs> more of a method actor uh, let's see if he's good at that like everything else he you know Ooh. killed it in life but <laughs> hopefully his dick will be good but he ended up um coming to la and i guess his parents just kind of assumed everything was going kind of well yeah parents do that yeah they just assume they need the best to. it helps them sleep at night totally especially being in la you'd be kind of worried but the valley i mean the valley is the valley nothing really crazy happens out here yeah i would assume my kids are doing good so um, he ended up sending his parents like um nude photos or just basically 
fucked up pictures. My of- brain was just like nude photos, but then I was like, that can't be true. That's your fucking parents. <laughs> That's your parents. Don't send them. What? Nudes. Well, he sent him uh, pictures of his girlfriends. Girlfriend. Oh come on. Yeah. He's really fucked up. Yeah, dude. Uh, I don't know if it was like a. I'm just imagining like a cute little reindeer Christmas card, like Happy Holidays. <laughs> his girlfriend. There's a reindeer gaming. pulling the thong down. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good, but um, I guess. I guess everyone had kind of known that he was going to move to L.A. to be a porn star. Got it. Okay. Even his parents? Man. Or they soon found out. his sisters, brothers, or his brothers, and everyone kind of knew. Oh, Maybe God. his parents did. But they did just soon find out. So they went to go visit him and check out how he's doing because I think his dad met his new wife in L.A. So they kind of all met up. And, again, it's kind of hard to, when you look at these uh, articles. It's really bad how people talk about people in the porn industry. oh yeah like i get it and but it says here like and i quote she was a stripper and dressed the part my wife and i were deeply embarrassed as was the girl when we took them to a fine restaurant steven was oblivious though and acted quite proud of her like fuck yeah, i'm gonna be proud of my stripper ass girlfriend like yeah she's confident that's the person i chose like <laughs> fuck it yeah i don't know i just thought it was it was weird that i was siding with steven but i thought it's kind of fucked up how everyone's well, just yeah. like she's wearing something crazy to a fine restaurant what'd you what'd you fucking go to what but it's it? like anything else it's just like you know if you're a casual person if you like have a girlfriend that's goth or whatever like exactly. it's gonna be the same conversation no matter what anybody that's gonna be different is yeah. going to be looked at as different but sex workers are definitely frowned upon more than anything else you and know? I, yeah and i know and we know that because we do work in the industry but just yeah. l- listening to the way people talk about it even in la weekly right which oh is yeah such an progr- not i mean it's kind of a progressive magazine right yeah. i don't know they have weed on the cover and all that stuff Lots and of weed and adult stuff porn store if porn stars on the front yeah um so i guess your parents aren't gonna like anyone but especially strippers that Stephen yeah. decided to break home so so do you know what a mope is a mope? A mope. No. So we live in the porn valley and we work in the industry and we don't know what mopes are. And I know what a fluffer is. Yeah. Right? So it's kind of like the guy version, except for they're not constantly like blowing someone <laughs> in between scenes. Um, but this is kind of like the bottom feeders of the porn industry, right? So Steven, this is why I'm bringing it up, is that Steven was, came here and ended up, instead of becoming a big star... Like uh, like people would assume he would be or how he thought he was going to be and make it in acting or porn acting. He became a mope. OK. And they basically just hang around like the studios and they're hoping to get their dick sucked. You know what I mean? Got it. So okay, they're not okay. they're not the guys that get paid five hundred dollars a scene. They're the dudes that get paid 50 bucks plus food. Right. But I guess an HIV test is like one hundred and thirty five bucks. So I really. Yeah. You're actually paying to get your dick sucked in some ways. <laughs> but it's the lowest level of performer. Okay. And I guess it came to be in 1995. I'm just going to be a little history on the mope. <laughs> um, when the porn industry is always searching for like the, the newest, greatest thing in porn that's going to sell everything and kind of the idea of extreme. We, we notice porn now is really extreme, but this is kind of where it came from. And a British producer or whatever, John Bowen, um, or performer, T-Bone, John T-Bone, came up with the idea of an extreme mega gangbang. Right? Got it. Okay. So this is how we get our mope is that they basically just kept enlisting, enlisting people to perform in the world's biggest gangbang. So they had like 300 just people. Just a bunch of randos, basically. Randos, Bottom dude. Bottom feeders that just wanted like a little action. Exactly. Okay. And this is kind of just finding there's people in the porn industry that were already running to work, but it could have been really expensive, right? Yeah. So you're doing So the- if you get the cheapest labor possible, just the dudes that want like a porn star signature at the conventions. Exactly. Yeah. Got so it. that's kind of how we're evolving into Steven. I mean, he he kind of just hung out on around scenes and or in, and sets and stuff like that, and ended up just being the lowest level. Like the biggest thing that Steven is the is the Palin thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's his peak. That is his peak. So because this company put out this movie, which was really extreme, it obviously caught people's attention, and it was produced for really cheap. Yeah. Right, it kind of spawned a bunch of people copycatting the films and their okay. kind of method, right? So mopes became a really big thing. I guess in LA there are a lot of mopes. I thought they were just bad dude actors, but there's <gasps> people that have. I mean, it's kind of like their side hustle, right? Which 
or just a hobby it sounds a- like because you're not even making money on it really at that not, point yeah not really it's like really 50 to 75 bucks for a thing and even then you're i mean you still getting your dick touch which is good <laughs> i guess yeah but it's the women that are making the money yeah i like that uh do you know jim powers Yes. He called them, uh, he said they're worthless, dealless load droppers. <laughs> load dropper. <laughs> <laughs> that thought is so good. But I guess mopes aren't really liked in the industry. Right? Okay. I mean, it makes sense. Whatever. Probably and bringing the value down. Bringing know? the value, and a lot of them are really delusional. So yeah. they're like, I'm going to make it big. This person's going to be, you know, amazing. And I'm going to just. I'm going to be the next Belladonna or Pam, or not Pamela Anderson. Who's the Jenna Jameson. We know porn. What are we talking <laughs> Jenna Jameson or whoever. Yeah. So I guess a performer, um, Tucker Slane, had basically been a really popular mope. He was just telling people, you know, because they were saying that mopes don't really know that they're mopes. Um, Got it. They need to believe that they're employed by the companies, probably. Exactly. And this guy's. This I really like this guy. He's probably one of my favorites. He said his allegiance is to metal metal music and big tits. <laughs> he said he moved to L.A. to be a musician, but you can be successful in porn if you have the cock and the look. <laughs> oh, God. So rock stars don't get to do this kind of thing anymore. Long gone are the days of poison. <laughs> <laughs> and he said he had made $500 at a scene one time, but again, it's really rare. Yeah, usually it's just nothing. Okay. So, so now I know what a mope is. Yeah, mope. Just basically a porn piece of furniture, and that's where Steven Driver kind of, or Steve Driver was kind of at, even lower than that. Okay. So he had a lot of confidence, you know, <laughs> in what he was doing. From karate to mope. And also, um, in the industry, there's there's work, a lot for women too, but as guys, they kind of use the same people, especially yes. when they're good performers. Yeah. Um, so if a company like Kick-Ass Pictures is doing one foot fetish uh video a week and they pay fifty dollars i mean how are you paying your rent on that right right so they're basically the guys are just kind of struggling uh porn or mopes are just kind of struggling economically okay so with that hope of trying to be the next big star people kind of throw in their own little uh catchphrases oh right so a mope is trying to think that they're gonna be the next big thing with a catchphrase (laughs) so (laughs) Because that's why I watch porn for exactly. catchphrases. Exactly. And our boy, <laughs> Steve Driver, his signature was monster hands. What? So he would wear, like, these big hands from, like, a Halloween costume or whatever. And he'd jack off on the girl with his hands. And when he'd come, he'd yell, monster hands. Shut up. <laughs> Swear to God. No. <laughs> <laughs> which, that was his thing? Which I monster could, hands? I, I mean, I could only. Mickey hands would be better if it was, like, a Mickey Mouse hand, right? Like, Mickey slap. No, <laughs> stupid monster hands i don't that's insane i can't even imagine like if it's just like uh werewolf hands or skeleton i need to find out more about this we gotta look into some porn when we get out of here (laughs) so that movie we were talking about erection 2008 even though he was a future like a future performer which is kind of moving up in that mope world um he was just kind of skittish, and nobody really liked being around him. He was uncomfortable. He didn't make anyone feel good. Oh. And he struggled with his scenes. Got it. Because, again, if you can... Well, it's hard to stay hard and keep jerking off with monster hands. That would keep me going. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if you suck at school, you suck at pilot things, you can't even keep hard. You're not even cool. Like, it's okay if your dick doesn't work that well, but just be nice to the girls, play your role, and come when you have to. Right. Yeah. This guy just Just make up for it in personality, like most of life. <laughs> like, straight up my life to a T, you know? <laughs> so everyone just kind of thought he was a, he was just a total nerd. So he ended up being um, friends with another mope. This is how he met our friend Herbert Hin Wong, also known as Tom Dong. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Stars of such films as Hookers and Blow 3. <laughs> My fucking favorite. <laughs> oh, and uh, our girl, Christina Rose, Dirty Girl. Dirty Girl. Dirty Girl. Oh, and Come Coat My Throat 5. <laughs> God. Those are the first four. So he basically worked on a gangbang thing with uh, Tom Dong, and they kind of they kind of They became, hit it off. They hit it off. They were friends. Mope to mope. <laughs> Finger traps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got stuck in a finger trap the first time I... 
Of course you did. <laughs> like, freak the fuck out. You know what I You cat- had full panic, right? Full You're panic. You're like, I'm stuck like this forever. <laughs> and I, I better figure it. out how to grow old like this. <laughs> I ripped it apart. Like, I mean, <laughs> freak the fuck out, especially because it wasn't mine. Oh, which God. Which is the reason why I would destroy it. But I ripped it, like, twisted it and all the... Yeah, I hope there was another girl there and you just looked at her and you're like, see what I could do? <laughs> <laughs> this could be you. This could be you. <laughs> um, Tom Tom Dong was an Asian man, which is, I guess, kind of a rarity in porn. Uh, but unlike his friend, he was used in – he was used a lot. He was actually a pretty good moat. Okay. He was raised in the San Gabriel Valley. He was a Chinese immigrant. And he went to school at uh, University of California, Riverside. Okay. He was really good with computers, IT, um, but he just kind of kept to himself. He was a really nice guy. He already had a job, but he didn't really tell anybody about his like main money making, uh, you know, gigs. It's just when I'm in porn, I'm in porn, and when I'm in my regular life, I'm in my regular yeah. life. Yeah, he just, just compartmentalized the two. Exactly, yeah. it doesn't really cross over. Okay, that's probably a healthy way to do it. Yeah, even people when they asked in the porn industry, they're like, um, I think he had a computer tech job. I don't know oh. where. He didn't talk much. Right. You know. Um, but he lived in Canoga Park. He had his own little oh. house, and he lived uh, in the Bella Vista apartments off DeSoto and the 101. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, the porno apartments, apparently. Uh-huh. So unlike his friend Steven, he got a he got a pretty big role in a movie. I guess um, the movie he he was featured in as Tom Dong was shot for $50,000, which is oh. pretty, well, not too bad for porn. For, yeah, for porn world. And in the movie, he kind of did a... He did the whole uh, domination thing, femdom. You okay. know, kind of guys with small dicks, too, and just, like, really uh, meek and quiet always end up playing those roles. It doesn't yeah. matter who, whatever, What age, they're anything. into or what they look like. Yeah. They just, yeah. If you're meek and you have a smaller dick, type. it's the personality type. You fit perfectly for it. So um, he was humiliated, abused, and this is really awful, but again, shown on how racist the porn world is, was told to chink it up by the directors. No. I swear to God. <gasps> swear to God. <laughs> Fucking oh fucked God. up. But again, the porn world is probably it's some of the most- insensitive. It's so unbelievably insensitive. Yeah. The, it's kind of weird because the mainstream- but the mainstream world wants to make everything PC. Like, everyone's a sex worker. Mm-hmm. But, like, if you talk to anybody involved in the industry at all- it's not like that. Nobody's PC. Nobody's using the right terms. Everybody's pretty fucked up and cold and mean. Hookers and blow number three. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Point taken. They really are. Yeah. And, and it's... Piss and fist. No, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, yeah, especially... Slashes when... on glasses. I, <laughs> That's a good one. That's, these are all real names. But it does get really racist and even ages, too. Like, when yes. uh, a fucked a grandma or, like, if you're over 30, you're a um, um, MILF. Right. So fucked up. I mean, over 25, really. Over 25. Let's be realistic. Honestly. And yeah. then if you can look like you're 16, then you get you get thrown into that role over right. and over and over. Everybody's a category. And they're not sensitive about those categories at all. They, no. like, push it pretty hard. Yeah. Especially. And they're mildly racist about it. Not even mildly. <laughs> like, And it, because it, the categories are what sells. I mean, obviously, yeah. you know. Uh, teens and whatever sells so they're gonna push if you can make that dollar for them we are gonna use and abuse you till you are done and you can't wear pigtails and glasses anymore never again no triggered (laughs) yeah and that's how i'm here (laughs) (laughs) yeah so that movie we were talking about actually didn't end up getting a release i don't know so the 50 grand one? Yeah, the 50 grand one. Okay. So th- it was kind of a rumor. I thought um, that was going to be his big breakout. But I guess he was known for just putting in work onto the, like, uh, in, for the femdom sites, like okay. uh, Mean Bitches and stuff by, like, oh, Glenn yeah, King yeah. and all stuff like that. And um, supposedly it's rumored to be around there today, which I guess would be kind of in bad taste to watch it now. Yeah. But Hill and Wong became really good friends. So, okay. um Wong would kind of just rely on him for transportation. He would um, he would drive him to and from places. They would just help each other out in any way they could. And okay. Wong, again, was more popular than than Steven. So he kind of helped his friend get some jobs. Right. Maybe there's some opportunity for Steven to kind of like be around more sets, meet new people. Exactly. Yeah. In so much to a point where they came as a set. Okay. And Got it. Again, I quote, they were called the Chris Tucker and Jackie Chan of porn. Shut up. (laughs) (laughs) Swear to God. That's amazing. (laughs) Wow. 
<laughs> but I guess nobody really, it's not that they didn't like him, but again, they're kind of fucking weirdos, dude. Like, yeah. they're just maybe not weird, but just a little bit quiet. Steven's definitely they're weird. They're the outcasts. They are the outcasts. The nerds in a bad, like, just in a. Yeah, I mean, there's a definite hierarchy to every, everything. Especially, especially in porn. Porn. <laughs> porn is just so. Yeah. Awful, but. Yeah. You mean great. Yeah, great and awful <laughs> at the same time. The people are terrible or amazing. It's yeah. it's such a weird. There's a clear divide for sure. So the owner of Ultima DVD, which is in Van Nuys, actually right not too far from here, is uh, decided to take them in. So okay. we'll kind of have you work for us. He owned Ultima DVD and he basically had them live at the studio. Oh, and that sounds gross. It is pretty gross. Yeah, so he hey, met... Hey, you want to sleep on this cum? Um, yeah, just wipe that off. <laughs> Yogurt or something. <laughs> Eric would have never met... The owner would have never met Stephen Hill if, if Tom... Um, if Wong didn't ever recommend him, which is kind of sad, too. So your okay. friend recommended you. And they both ended up getting getting hired in 2009, and they got paid with uh, money, room, and board. Okay. So... I mean, in L.A., that's a lot. That's a lot. Really, living though. Living expenses are just kind of crazy. Just take care of, Yeah. If you were just to get a place to live and you have to perform, like, that would make sense. Like, yeah. there's people I know that do that as far as, like, in the weed industry. It's like, you take care of this grow house, you can live here for free. Right. You don't get paid, but you can live but here. But you don't have to pay rent. Exactly. Yep. So, Tom, Tom recommended... Uh, Tom recommended Steve because and because they thought Tom was a good performer, they just kind of took it on his word. Okay. And that's how he kind of got more work. Over time, though, people started to notice that Steve was Steven was kind of a weirdo. It's just that you could see those little personality traits that are a little bit off. Yeah. He kind of owed people money and he just been dodging people. He just wasn't a very upstanding, you know, just he wasn't a good guy. Yeah. There's definite red flags. Red flags. Even if owing money isn't just one thing, there's a little other bit things. unstable, a little bit off. You can tell when you're talking to someone. Exactly. And, and there's a lot of those people in porn. It's especially in porn, especially in LA. Steve tried to sabotage things with Eric and a little bit with his friend Tom. So okay, there just been a couple of incidents at the house that just you know things were kind of coming to. So people start noticing a pattern. Exactly. That something's but, off with him. And especially when you're living there. Uh, a lot of the girls were just uncomfortable. Oh, that's never good. Right? Especially on a when porn When a bunch set. of women are uncomfortable around yeah. you, usually that's a bad sign. And I guess he had, um, I guess Stephen had a learning disability um, where they would employ him to do some work with like the internet stuff, but everything had to be redone. So they were just oh. getting kind of frustrated with that. Shit. And it's kind of just coming in from every angle. It's not only are you, if it was just one thing, it would be right. fine again. Yeah, just like, oh, so-and-so's not good at such and such. Yeah. But if people are noticing that every area of your life is kind of chaotic and fucked up. Yeah. You owe people money. They you're can't not really a good depend performer. on you. Yeah. yeah. And you, exactly, you're sabotaging things. But the worst that got everyone the most was his uh, cleanliness, his hygiene. Oh, God, no. <laughs> it's a one female actor. And he does porn. And he does <gasps> porn, dude. Ew. So Gross. I guess um, an actress had said, like, you know, I jumped into his car. He was giving me a ride to the set or whatever. And it was just awful. It was just she said it was like the you could just smell the car. And then oh. another one had said that when they worked at them, it was just a terrible boy girl scene because of bad hygiene. Oh, my God. Um, she said, but he was really polite. <laughs> doesn't make up for doesn't it. make up for it if like you if, reek i can't handle it dude just wash your dick <laughs> that's it it's real easy taint water specifically taint. soap all the tape bird bath it honestly you could go into the bathroom just before like the scene. squat a little just you know baby powder <laughs> something axe <laughs> <laughs> so that uh, not only is cleanliness but again that girl that had jumped in the car with him said that she got out like uh, a light ahead of where she was supposed to go <gasps> so she could walk up and just she was like no i'm good i'll get out of the car and, oh my god yeah so it's that bad that's so, not good he a little stanky she's like leaning out the window rolled down like a little puppy <laughs> like a dog <laughs> 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 or like a the joker in the dark night yes yeah. just- <laughs> Just gotta give, give a breath real quick. 
But um, so Eric, the the owner of Ultima DVD, uh, basically tried to fix this. Instead of firing this guy, he ended up getting a shower at the studio. See, nobody gets a second chance. <laughs> <laughs> Never give someone leeway. You no. gotta just cut them off right away. Oh, you stink? Bye, fool. That's Bye. it. Yeah. You can't sneak in porn. Just like I can't no. have dirty hands out of fucking if in the hospitality industry. Like right? if I'm a server, I can't I can't have shit under my nails. It doesn't make sense. It's yes. just the parts of the job. It's just rules of the job. Exactly. Every job has a job description. You Don't. have to have a good smelling taint if you do porn. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Your taint must smell of gain. <laughs> But I guess, yeah, the shower, it was a running shower. It wasn't even, like, some, like, lame-ass shower. It was a hot water, cold water shower. It was legit. Yeah. Porn studios make it, like, foolproof for you to stay clean. Like, how hard is it, dude? People are just smoking weed, chilling, showering, and fucking. Like, what a life. I know. Fuck. I know. Career changes coming. (laughs) (laughs) But I guess uh, he smelled so bad that they couldn't, like, his stink lingered. How does that even happen? He just, you know, like when a dog uh, takes like a bath and then he just starts rolling around everywhere. (laughs) Just stink permeated everything. He okay, so again, everything's going wrong, and that was kind of like the last try. You smelled, you weren't really good, you were really uncomfortable on camera, and you just weren't needed. Your homie Tom was doing great, and he was kicking ass, but he had his other job. You know what I mean? So even if he didn't even need it, he didn't need it. That's where you need. You can't need porn. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> i just don't you think that's be, a very safe you have to love it but not be in love with <laughs> <Yeah>. it <laughs> it's like everything in your life <laughs> so they, they kind of kicked him out they were like hey dude you gotta go sorry thanks but no thanks and you've been doing good but uh we could we could, but you haven't but you haven't we could find a better performer and give him room and rent and and get produced better quality of pictures right. Yeah, like anything. If you don't keep up, if you're not performing at your job, yeah. you, you have to go. So this is a write-up. But it's a smelly paint. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. I want to see the paperwork on yeah. that for sure. <laughs> this is your first warning. <laughs> <laughs> of many. Uh, but he wasn't ready to leave. He said, fuck that write-up. I'm not ready to go, and you're not terminating me. Come smell this. I took a shower. <laughs> no, I'll make it up to better. you. <laughs> so um, Eric was like, hey, dude, you got to call your parents, but you need to get everything in order to... to just get this ready to where we can have you move out. Right. Um, he gave him two weeks. And after those two weeks, he gave him a two week. After that, he said, you're going to have to leave or I'm going to have to call the cops. Shit. So now things are kind of getting a little bit more hectic. Yeah. And I bet he feels like everything's closing in. Because exactly. it really is fill- falling apart, you know? His life was falling apart because you don't have a backup plan. You can't go back to your parents. You didn't set yourself up. To where you could be successful. Succeed, yeah. 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 You came out here. You're not by your family anymore. You're not in school. And you failed at all these things you set out to do. So yeah. he's got to really be feeling like everything is imploding on him. And I know that feeling. You just got to. <laughs> just, you just got to stick with one thing. Do something. Make some type of effort to change it. If it requires you taking a shower and buying a thing of 99 cent baby powder, fucking do it. <laughs> right. How Make hard it is work. it? Make it work. Yep. But um, I guess right before um right before the murder that's about to happen <gasps> there was something that happened at northridge at cal state northridge same type of thing with maryland i don't but he didn't go to the campus i tried my best to find the article i couldn't find it okay um but he did get into an incident at csun um where it had been kind of physical or something like that a okay weird like kinda, a fight or something yeah or threatening something similar to the incident at maryland okay okay did it involve math? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there was a little bit that said, um, I guess his dad had become uh, a little bit concerned for the safety because this is what it was. He had emailed. I don't know what exactly what the incident was, but he had emailed his dad saying, like, yo, I'm going to kill everyone, <gasps> which isn't, you know, getting violent at school. But the dad had to. Report but it was him. concerned enough because he had a history. I'm sure it's like you take that shit seriously when it's happened before. And he had said he was going to take a lot of people with him. Oh, God. Which is, if you're a dad, so the dad, thank God, notified. The dad is right. one thing, instead of just protecting your kid, he notified LAPD and they picked him up at Northridge. And a lot of parents will just, like, make excuses for their kids. So that's really responsible of him to put that aside and just, you know, because sometimes the compassion for your own child yeah. overshadows the safety of others, to be honest. And you know, you know that he has these weird kind of 
traits and maybe he's a little bit depressed and maybe right. things aren't working out in a completely different state that you sent your kid to. Yeah. Um, you have to take that shit seriously. I'm glad that his dad kind of did, you know, and his dad really stopped something that could have happened. So he threatened people. He said he was going to take a, you know, as many people as he could out with him. And when they found him, they found he had a sword in his vehicle and he was just sitting in his car chilling out. Uh, he didn't do anything. He didn't hurt anyone. But he was under, obviously put under a 72-hour hold. Psychiatric yeah. evaluation. Good. So I guess after in the 72-hour hold, he a 72 hour hold, he had talked to his dad. And I guess his dad had tried to talk to him, make him feel a little bit better. But his dad after was like, oh, maybe I made him feel a little bit more depressed after that. So. Huh. Dads can do that. They can, yeah. Because he was just it's saying, you know. Skill. He's like, oh, yeah. He's like, I had, you know, had you when I was 34. And Stephen's like 34 and getting in trouble for using the computer at, you know, CSUN and making threats about killing students. So I could see how you wouldn't like he thought he was adequate. helping, but he's like Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Right. Yeah. Uh side note, this place Ultima D V D, which isn't far from where we're recording right now, hasn't has had more than one incident of violence there. Really? Where it's all gonna take down, which I thought this was a funny little side note. So around the same time there was a, a party at this Ultima DVD place. It was, uh, you know Glenn King from Me and Bitches. Mm-hmm. He used to shop at our store. Uh, he was having a, a party for the store, uh, for the porn star Brookhaven, right? Okay. So none other than mixed martial arts artist, uh, or mixed martial arts star War Machine Oh no. ends up punching somebody in the face at this place. So no. Yeah, so they were already, this place has already had some kind of stuff. So he had ruined the party I feel like he had hit that Alex does... Knight. Oh, okay, got it. Yep. He hit He has Alex a hittable Knight. face. Yeah, he does. He does, <laughs> really. But so there was a party and War Machine ended up uh attacking Alex Knight and then ended up going after his own manager, Derek Hay, and he was the owner of LA Direct Models. War Machine basically ended up just chasing him to the end of the other end of the parking lot and he hit him a few times and just started knocking him down. Oh god. He's such a douche. He's such a douche. I just I thought it was kind of hysterical. In this article, this is before the whole Christy well, Mack course, thing happened. Yeah. And he was talking about War Machine that had been quoted as in like, porn. the porn uh, industry is more violent than mixed martial arts because... Because you bring the violence, <laughs> dude. I bring the violence. Uh, but he said that MMA fighters respect people more out of the ring and they wouldn't fight each other compared to people in the porn industry who when they see each other, he's like, it's like high school and everybody just fights with each other and there's little cliques and stuff like that. It's like, what clique were you in where it was cool to fucking almost kill your girlfriend? Right. What clique's that? It's completely different, dude. Don't try and blame other people. Don't try and figure out some reason to justify it. Like, oh, it's clicky. No, you chose to do awful things. And he tried to say it was like, oh, everybody in the porn industry does testosterone and blah, 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 and that's why. Oh, whatever. And MMA. And and even then, testosterone's not a good... I just like that it was a little... That it's just random that these two people... Like, murders have been kind of linked to this place. Right. That's or interesting. Or at least attempted murder. Yeah, very, very weird. So, you ready for the murder? Yeah. You ready for things to get kind of crazy? So, I guess... So, because he had been kicked out and evicted and he didn't really leave, shit kind of got a little crazy. As it does. So, he had been living there for about a, about a year. And then they had asked him to move. And now we have Christopher Rachel or Rachel. I don't know how to say that. It's R-A-C-H-A-L. Okay. Rachel, Rachel. So we're going to have Chris. So Chris basically had to get, he had to evict, um, he had to evict Stephen from, from the crash okay, pad. Okay, so he was like the last line of defense exactly. that was like, you got to go. Yeah, so he had to leave. Um, Stephen was sitting on the couch and he was watching a battle scene from Kingdom of Heaven. He was like tripping out. He was just like, this is such a good movie. Come watch this movie with me, Chris. Come watch this movie. And Chris oh, is no. like, hey, you know, it'd be cool if, if you left. left right now. <laughs> yeah, like, I would love to watch this movie A movie with you. sounds great as long as you're not here. Yeah, you know, this movie goes really well outside. Like, <laughs> the lighting, everything. So finally, um, Chris just ended up sitting, sitting on the couch. And as he got closer, Stephen reached behind his back and came up with his machete-like sword, no. samurai sword. So the weapon was a studio prop, basically, um, and it was like a fake, a fake, um, 
a fake samurai sword used for castration videos in these femdom videos. Oh, okay. But Steve, but it works well enough to kill someone with? It didn't until Steven decided to sharpen it. Oh, my God. <laughs> right? That's premeditation. Yeah, exactly. And it was an aluminum sword. Also dangerous for anybody else that's filming a castration scene Jeez. with an unknown usable yeah. knife. She's like, oh, shit. That's like how what's his, what's his name got killed in the crow. Yes. yes that's what I was just going to say. <laughs> oh, we thought they were fake, man. Damn. You, you could really get killed. And you lost a dick. My bad. I was so my bad about that. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say I'm sorry. Wow. <laughs> but it was an aluminum sword. Manufactured with a dull blade that he had sharpened. Okay. And he had basically taken a crazy, just crazy swing to him and put a deep gash into Chris's left shoulder. No. I think this took, almost took off his entire arm. Oh, my God. I feel like something, uh, yeah, so basically almost cut off his entire arm. And then he had tried to hit him again, so he went to go block it. And I guess... Uh, he blocked it by grabbing another prop. So they're kind of fighting with props, which is kind of weird and comedic. <laughs> right. But also terrifying. But this is definitely a murder story. So, yeah. So it was a hospital bed, which Not is so weirder. Funny. Not funny. But he grabs a hospital bed to block the samurai sword. And it basically created a barrier between them. So it didn't slow Steven down. It actually like, made him more mad. And he just kept getting more crazy, more angry. Oh, my God. And he just wanted to kill. He wanted to kill people. So he started swinging again. And um, Chris grabbed the blade with his right hand. Oh, no. And he said it would nearly cut his hand in half. And he could see the tendons just coming out of his hand. Oh, my God. Pretty fucked up. So because someone, again, this is a film house. People can hear this. There's other people. You're not the only ones alone in the house. But they so. probably thought it was acting, right? You thought it was cast- castration, right? <laughs> oh, my God. So they ended up coming to rush in. That's a nightmare because you're sitting there being attacked. Yeah. And you're making all these noises trying to get help. However, yeah. the people that can hear you are just ignoring you. Yeah. Because that's the normal sound yeah. coming out of a castration video. And so you're like, not a drill. Not <laughs> a drill. S-O-S. <laughs> But they came in, they come in, come in to help him, and I guess he had been, uh, when they came in, he, he stood up on a, Stephen had stood up on a piece of furniture and was like, I'm going to kill you all, and everyone was like, oh shit, and they ended up like rushing him. So they saw Chris lying on the floor, like really fucked up, they tried to calm Steve down before rushing, they're like, hey, you know, you should chill out, they ended up calling 911, and this sent Chris, uh, this sent Stephen over just sent him yeah. tripping out dude he was like now i'm really caught now i'm gonna go wild and i'm really just gonna yeah he's got damage. nothing to lose exactly yeah so he just loses his shit and not only you just lost the place you're it's desperation desperation really makes people do some crazy shit they snap yep so after they had called 911 um steve uh hill had lunged at them it was like fuck that i'm gonna kill you guys before you can call 911 and there ended up being a pileup they tried to run out the door and there was a pileup they tried to make it out um joe verandrell which are two of the victims made it out and ran outside the house and they're about three feet out when they heard tom dong screaming like high pitch squealing oh, no. screaming and i guess he had come in to kind of go and help everyone and he was the one who cut because they were friends. Right. He's thought, like, if anyone could defuse this situation, probably the person closest to him exactly. is Fred. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. So when Drell ran back to confront Hill, because he had heard that Tom was squealing, he saw that Tom was on the floor, bleeding out, was cut at the waist, <gasps> and his elbow was cut to the bone. No. And he was turning purple. So Hill began swinging and just trying to kill Drell. And he said, I have martial arts training, you know. And um, and he basically stepped into him and hit, them, hit him into the wall. And he had hit him in the shoulder and caused a wound that had twenty needed 23 stitches to, to close up. Jeez. So he ended up going towards Eric Jover, which was the owner of Ultima DVD, the one who was pretty much evicting, evicting him. And he had just started chasing him outside. He just started going for about 20 yards. And then he jumped into a blue RAV4 and took the fuck out. Or, no, he tried to go and pursue Eric. Okay. In a car now. So not only are you being chased with somebody with a sword, now he's got a fucking RAV4. And you really aren't going to outrun him. But he did. And Hill ended up taking off. So there was a crazy, like, manhunt for him. I think Eric had offered 
a two thousand dollar reward for anyone that could help find him or anything like huh. that. Um, yeah, because you've got to think he's gonna come back. Exactly. And at the time, he was on probation. Stephen was on probation. Again, another incident I couldn't find, but he was arrested in 2008 for a weapons violation in Burbank. Jesus. So this guy has a fucking track record. I don't get Yeah, how... it's always a pattern. It's never an isolated incident that comes out of nowhere. There's totally. always signs. And Wong ended up being taken to the hospital and he died. Uh, oh. Blood loss, everything like that. Oh my god. So now he was on the run in somewhere in the valley i guess he had stayed locally people had said maybe he had hidden in chatsworth park kind of up in that area okay but three days after the attacks someone found his rav4 they spotted the car in the 8800 block of azul drive in west hills which is kind of above valley circle and roscoe but like topanga and roscoe so a little bit up valley it's circle like where i used to live exactly. <laughs> it's right by my old house right by yeah <laughs> Um, so they ended up basically making a barricade and trying to come and get him, which doesn't freak anyone else out, right? Doesn't right. Totally cool. Chill. Back, yeah. It doesn't back you into a corner. So he had ran, ran to take off from the cops, but he still had another blunt object. I don't know if it was uh, a sword, the same sword, which is pretty pretty funny, too, because remember that attack that War Machine had been in? He said that he saw props like the samurai swords at the house and he went. He said it was kind of eerie that he had huh. seen maybe a... Uh, the weapon used for a murder. Right. Um, but they did just keep him up like that. And I guess he had had one, but he ended up having, um, getting kind of cornered again. So he ends up going up into Chatsworth. And if you know Chatsworth Park, it's rocks, it's cliffs, it's yeah. no path. There's nothing like that. So you're just out in the hills have eyes kind of territory. That's exactly what it looks like. It's yeah. hills have eyes. If you guys can imagine anything, it's straight up hills have eyes, rocks. It's There's, one of my favorite places. It's I good. love rock climbing. It's even <laughs> called Rocky Peak. You yeah. know what I mean? So um, he ended up grabbing his like knife and was like, I'm going to kill myself. You know, you guys need to stay back. And he was saying he was going to stab himself or fall on the blade or whatever. But again, cops use their methods of trying to reason and right. be cool and Some calm him down. tactics. But after eight hours, shit got kind of crazy. So he held them down for about the LAPD SWAT team for about eight hours. And as it started to get, um, as it started to get night around, around dusk, SWAT unit decided to use non-lethal, a non-lethal weapon, and they ended up using tasers and a beanbag projectiles. And I guess the beanbag had hit him in the arm, and he still held on to the sword, but he kind of freaked out and ended up jump, jumping off the cliff in oh. Chatsworth. No, went to about a thirty or fifty foot drop in Chatsworth. Yeah, it was about 30 feet, hit something, and then another 20 feet. And this is the video we're going to post. I said it's kind no. of a snuff film, but it's not because fuck this guy and he jumps off the fucking cliff. So you're fucking bad. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> you're a murderer. You're a murderer. And honestly, the fall didn't look that bad, but exactly. <laughs> what, <laughs> I don't know. That sounds pretty fucked up. It's pretty bad. You know what, though? When you do go to Chatsworth, this is exactly what I imagine happening every time I go near a rock. I'm just like, Yeah, it gives me a lot of panic. So much panic. Because you're like, yeah. oh, one, because it's dusty, so yes. you do slip kind of easy. Yes, completely. But, yeah, he ended up losing his sword on the first impact, ended up hitting, and then they ended up taking him away, and he ended up dying later on. Wow. So. So basically it was like one drop, a second drop, and the injury sustained from that took his life. Exactly. Wow. The weird thing is that the only publicity that he got really is that him and Tom Dong made their biggest, uh, they had their 15 minutes kind of in the porn industry because companies did, uh, director Mike Ramon attempted basically to make money off of it and he put the title porno samurai killer and it had hill and wong on the cover wearing masks shut up swear to you and that's so evil to try and make money off that again porn industry nothing safe and they right. have no lines so their biggest their biggest accomplishments came after the notoriety of their deaths in in a compilation video that's fucked up porn. his parents went down to la to arrange a funeral uh, they invited some of his friends from his face or from his MySpace page that came up from the industry, but nobody showed up. Oh shit! And that is the end of Stephen Driver or Stephen Clancy Hill, aka Steve Driver. That is thoroughly depressing. It was. <laughs> <laughs> it was really sad. 
Oh my god. Also, my mouth doesn't work, so sorry if that was very hard to listen to. But I don't remember hearing about that happening at all. And we were definitely it was two thousand what two thousand ten. Yeah, we were definitely deep, balls deep in the industry. Balls at that deep point. in the industry. So I don't, I've never heard of a mope. Yeah. Not at that's all. That's weird that, okay, so I feel less bad because when you first said it, I was just like, am I an idiot? Like, do it, I, I not no know idea. this thing at all? No. I mean, I guess we're not really in familiar with ma- like male performers a lot. Yeah, who I don't cares care about, about them? them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're just there. I care about maybe two. A dick is a dick is a dick. <laughs> But wow. Yeah, so that's, that's crazy. Porn Valley, dude. I, I'm cra- it's so crazy when you guys watch the thing. I, if you're from the valley, you could just perfectly like you know when you go hiking at Chatsworth, you're like someone probably died here. Oh yeah, for sure. And this isn't far from Spawn Ranch. Yes, exactly. So, that's the other thing people, if you're not from here, you don't know that. It's like right like a mile away from Spawn mile, Ranch, yeah, right? About that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Good times. Damn. You got to That's crazy. Picture this dude. He looks like just like I, it sucks when people just look nerdy and uncomfortable in a picture anyways <laughs> i hate when i see pictures that like make me feel awkward yeah. for them you know what i mean yeah. like when you watch like a, a high school like uh i don't know teen drama thing and you feel awkward for the characters yes you know how sometimes that happens in a picture like just a still shot where you feel mortified for them yeah i'm gonna show you one right now Ooh, how fun. <laughs> Let's see. is it his dick I wish. That I couldn't find. Here you go, bro. Whoa, whoa. I gotta get closer. <laughs> That's the samurai sword. He's holding a sword. He's <laughs> puffing his chest out really big. There's something on his arm, like like a piece of clothing. Like, he wanted to take his shirt off, but couldn't commit to it fully. <laughs> Definite farmer's tan. <laughs> and that face. He's like, hmm. Yeah, like, he's going for a face that's like, hey, take me seriously. But it just looks like he just smells something bad. Exactly. Yeah. 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 You shouldn't have to pretend to be serious with a samurai sword in your hand. That should already scream serious. And it looks like he's trying to flex, but his arms are literally like parallel lines. Like he has no muscle definition whatsoever. Yeah. He looks like I feel right now. <laughs> <laughs> just fucking flabby, but kind of feeling confident when you grab something that's shaped like a dick. <laughs> no. <laughs> So that's that's crazy. Yeah. Um, I'll show you them as Obama. That'll be good too. These are all gonna be <laughs> on our. I can't even believe that. I can't believe that we didn't hear about this story. That was really interesting. But you'll a know lot of this back bo- information about him too. You'll know this box cover in a second, dude. Yes, He's I exact- totally see that. <laughs> so good. I, I'm yes. I know that guy. Yes, he's Barack Obama. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, wow. Yeah. Thanks good story. Thanks, bro. I like porn. Triple X part one. Yeah. I just like that War Machine was like, he just had the, like, if you read the article, he's being such a dick about it. Yeah. Just like, yeah. It's Everybody really, like, industry. he could not help but be a douche. He's just the worst. He is. It's just permeating, like, out of his pores. Yeah. He's just he's talking awful. down on the industry where it's like, well, people do this and people do that. And it's more violent than the industry I'm in. And I'm not violent. And I'm come from there. And it's just because everyone's like a high schooler. And then, boom, you go and, like. You do the ultimate. Yeah. Attack your lady. Attack your. You attack the Mac attack. Like. Dude. Whoo. <sighs> Chrissy Mac, if you ever listen to this. <laughs> I fucking love you. We love you so much. Like, love you. <laughs> oh. Too much, probably. Too much. <laughs> so, that's sex part one. That's sex part one? I, I mean, I can't talk right because of my nose. Oh, that's X that's part one. Sorry. X part one. <laughs> that was good. I like it. Uh, you're next, right? Yeah, next week we'll do Triple X Part 2. Cool. Yeah. So, I mean, I think we get out of here. We got to say a few things. Mm. Definitely check out links for Patreon, yep. Red List. If you wanted to get some merch, if you want to get access to bonus episodes, check out our Thread, thread List and our Patreon. Yeah, we have small merch, big merch, all kinds of Whatever merches. size queen stuff that you like. <laughs> and we want to say thank you to our new Patreon supporters. Nikki, Nikki, Marlene, Marlene, Stephen, Stephen, Molly. Wait, Stephen Hill, Stephen Clancy Hill. Yes, oh, exactly. From the great, he loves us. Uh, Marlon, do you say Marlon? Molly, Molly. I'm sorry, my voice is no, fucked no, no. up right now. I'm also half deaf right now. Laura, Laura, Kaylee, Kaylee. Another Leah, Leah, Jamie, Jamie, Jen, Jen, Jess, Jamie, Jen, Jess. Yep. Thank you so guys. Thanks, you guys for your Patreon support. Yeah. 
and then I think that's gonna be it for this week and we'll see you next week for X part two yes yeah <laughs> I don't even know what to do. I just forget. I was like, what's next? What do we do after this? I don't know. We could just say bye. Oh, no. You know what we could do? We could true crime and chill. Although I'm kind of sweaty a little bit. We can true crime and, you know, some distance and chill. But I'm wearing a sweater Baby powder and chill. Oh, baby powder and chill. (laughs) Maybe I won't get evicted from my place. (laughs) Being all stanky. We'll see you next week. Okay. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Let's say you just bought a house. Bad news is, you're one step closer to becoming your parents. You'll proudly mow the lawn, ask if anybody noticed you mowed the lawn, tell people to stay off the lawn, compare it to your neighbor's lawn, and complain about having to mow the lawn again. Good news is, it's easy to bundle home and auto through Progressive and save on your car insurance, which, of course, will go right into the lawn. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers. Discount not available in all states or situations. The Starlight Lounge presents An Evening with the Progressive Box. Oh, the moon. Yeah. That's Hugo, tickling the ivories. He just saved by bundling home and auto with Progressive. Gonna finally buy a ring for that gal of yours, Hugo? Send her my condolences. hi oh. This next one's for you, too. There's... A burglar in my heart. Thank you. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Discounts not available in all states or situations.